After cutting in on the 260, it turns out this actually works pretty well with being a parallelogram. You can see I still got a couple of flat corners that I'll need to cut in here and here. Sort of enough room for a girdle here. I'm gonna wait to cut in more until I figure out where it's gonna fall on here. But I'm writing down what I'm doing as I'm going. Got 90 degrees for the girdle and then 643, 54, and 90. That's what we started with. Cut in probably a simple keel pavilion coming in this way and then something coming in from that way to get this girdle or pavilion sorted. After plugging some things into GCS or Gem Cut Studio, I designed a quick, pretty easy to cut gemstone. Since this is such a small stone, I try to limit the number of facets. And we've got our pavilion here, so it'll just be four facets. And then the table is a little more complicated, but very simple. Cut some things to the girdle, cut the table in, and we'll be good to go. And that's what we're looking at here. The girdle, and then my four facets on the pavilion, and then for the crown, pretty shallow. Normally for the feldspars, you do a crown of you know, 42 to 43 degrees with star facets of 27. But we're going to establish the girdle thickness with the 42 to 90 degrees, and then level the girdle and then cut in our little accent facet and then cut the table. And that's the accent facet there. And that's the theory anyway. Let's see what we do. So the rough in shaping is done and there's a couple of issues that have arisen. There's a small fracture right around there that I'm gonna have to cut out, but I don't think that goes very deep. Coming down to the girdle here, on the end over here, we have a fracture that's gonna come off at some point. So I have to decide if I want to make the stone narrower there, or maybe I'll just truncate it, kind of nick the edges just to make it flat and less pointy. But of more concern is actually right here, right there. That's a fracture that I think goes deep enough to be of concern. You can see the slight color change. And I don't know that I can cut it out without losing like all of the stone, unfortunately. So I might just have to live with that and hope it doesn't cause problems in the future. I'll cut in a little bit to try to reduce the effect, but there's only so much I can do here. I can cut in as much as I want over here, barring hitting the dop over here and I can leave this as long as I want and I just have to watch out for, that I don't uh, try to cut these at the same depths. Here we are after 1200 grit with all of the facets in place. I ended up making these little small triangular facets on the end and flattening the very edges of the parallelogram just because it was going to be too brittle and I had some fracture problems on the tips. And I have a very small girdle to work with on this side here, right here. I'm not actually sure that that's enough, but we're gonna go with it and see what comes of it. So it's all an experiment. We're ready for the final polish on the pavilion and then I'll be able to switch. And actually there's a, there's still that little curve fracture in the pavilion here, which I don't think is gonna be visible from the other side because of the shiller. I really should polish it out, but I don't wanna cut down anymore already because the stone, I'm not gonna have enough width to make up for that difference. You can see on this face here, I've already cut quite close to the dop width on my wax. So most of the strength in the wax is coming from this side right now and I don't wanna remove any more from here, and I really don't have much more that I could remove before I start cutting into the metal there. This actually turned out better than expected currently. The girdle was thick enough at that weird spot. There's the shiller in the light reflecting. And there's a little bit of 
bumpy area on the right side here, but that'll cut out with the next angle fastens from that side. So it actually looks pretty promising to have this be a successful stone. After the 600 grit stage, I think I may have transposed my C2 and C3 because it doesn't quite match up with what the diagram says it should look like. I think my table was supposed to go down parallel to the long faces here as opposed to diagonal. So I messed something up. And because of that, the table is no longer a meet point because it would have been a very narrow strip. And I just made it a little bigger so it would actually have a little bit of a table rather than have two giant triangles coming in from either side. The shiller is still there though, and we'll only know what it looks like once we're done polishing and take it off the top. So I'll just keep going and see how it turns out. And we're done to a 50,000 diamond polish. Ready to come off the top. There's the shiller and the light there. As you may have noticed, there's no wax on here. I was feeling kind of lazy, and I knew I would have a lot of surface area with the keel, and so I only used CA glue. And it survived. I did come close to the girdle there, but that's just because this dop was a little oversized. And I just took it off the other dop and set it in here manually, so it was a little uneven, a little askew. But we have now a stone ready to come off the top, and because it's only CA glue, I'm just going to pop it in a bath of rubbing alcohol, which is a little less aggressive than denatured alcohol, but it will still dissolve CA glue in a little bit. So I'll set it in there and come back to check on it later.